the beauty of these French clocks is that um, you you have a system here which um, relies upon getting everything right and it has to be right now the the wheels here number three wheel is the one that le lifts the strike lever which lifts the hammer which is on this arbor here that one there which is triggered by uh, this 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 um, arbor being free of the uh, of the wheel of the pin on the wheel if this isn't right then it won't work it's striking now because on this wheel here which is the strike wheel that I mentioned before number three wheel there's a dimple now that dimple has to line up with this wheel here with a pin on it um, when that pin is being arrested by this detent here if this wheel is out of tune out of sequence with this wheel then the strike sequence won't work properly because the hammer has to have the cutoff point when this rack here has fallen and the hammer falls then the sequence has to stop and that will ensure that it does so if it isn't in sequence and the secret the hammer the sequence doesn't stop when the hammer has just fallen then the hammer is partly raised and it won't work properly when it comes to the next sequence so i got i got this working perfectly the hammer will strike when the uh, the 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 hour hand or the minute hand passes the respective time and i as this hand goes round right the sequence you can see the pin there i hope is on this detent here which is stopping it from spinning that means that the hammer has just fallen and it's still in its lowest position when this uh, the when the minute hand goes round right you can see that is lifting i hope and that will then permit this warning pin to drop just a tiny fraction on the other side and the warning pin on this number four wheel here or is it number five which is held by this detent on the other side of that that lever will be arrested and it will be lifted and 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 released as the hand goes round now the hand now goes round and as it gets up to here right this detent is lifted on the star inside the the r wheel on the main arbor the cannon arbor and as you can see it it'll lift now i hope that falls down that means that this was lifted high enough for this detent to be clear of that section there and now this point here this detent on this one here this this the top le lever will clear the pin that's in on this wheel here that wheel number five wheel will clear that pin and it starts to work right now that's the sequence it's it's working that's fine and the the um, pallet um, here the pallet lever the will lift the the uh, the rack up now if the if the spring is not strong enough 
when it starts to lift this, this section here is heavier at 11 o'clock than it is at 1 o'clock because it only has to lift that little one. But at 11 o'clock it's got to lift all that lot up. To strike 11, this rack tail here has to fall on that section there, the snail. And in doing that, that governs how far that falls down. Now, if the spring isn't strong enough, then this will, may not, not will, may not be lifted. So that I will show you now for 12 o'clock, this rack tail now falls down, not yet, this is half, half past, this detent hasn't moved right back, it's lifted a bit, but it's not lifted far enough to clear the rack. So it just falls once, the hammer falls once. Now as it goes round now, it comes up, again this detent has now been lifted because the warning pin has been cleared, the other pin has fallen down behind this detent here, and as this moves round, the hammer falls down, the, the rack tail here falls onto the snail. Right, now there, that's fallen down there, that's the extent to which it goes. I'll come back, come back on how you have to line that up. Now, now it should strike 12, but it's got all that to lift. See, it's lifting that, this wheel here, the, the, uh, uh, whatever it's called, the, the little flipper there, has to lift it all up, and that's quite an effort for it. So if it's not a good strong spring, it may not do it. Now, if it doesn't do it, it means that this tail here is left in that position down there at 11 o'clock. And when that happens, the clock will continue to run, as you can see now. Oh no, it won't because you can't see it because it's not, it hasn't got a pendulum on. The clock would continue to run and then this detent here, the, the uh, rack tail, jams against the snail and stops the clock. And that's because the spring isn't strong enough to make it do the work in getting it going. So if your clock stops, reg not regularly, but at times, at 20 past 12, it could be that this, this uh, rack tail is jammed against that section. And if it's in, a, in an old slate clock, a big one, um, you can't free it without taking it, taking the works out and turning it upside down. If you turn it upside down, then that hammer will drop back out. You can see it dropping now, yeah? I hope. Let's see if I can get it better. When it's like that, it would be jammed and as you turn it upside down, let's see if I can get it, it falls. Now that's fallen clear. So if the clock stops at 20 past 12, the reason for that may be that the spring hasn't had enough impulsion to pick this arm up to free that which has fallen at 11 o'clock, not 12, 11 o'clock. And the clock will continue to work until the hand, the minute hand, gets to 20 past, by which time this section will have moved round and jammed that, the, the, the rack tail. And this is evident on my analysis which I show 
here. I hope somehow. That it that's the twenty four hour run and it jammed there and it jammed there and there as uh, that was getting day eight. It jammed. And if it jams You've had it. You've got to take the clock out. I Sorry, no. If it's a small light clock, you can turn the clock upside down. Take the pendulum off, turn it upside down, and that will fall out. That will just drop out. If it's in a slate clock, which will weigh up to 25 kilos, you can't turn it upside down, and it won't do the clock any good at all, and you may damage it severely. So you have to take this section out, take the take the uh, out of the clock and turn it upside down then, and then put it back in. And that is quite a, a complicated system, and which is hopeless. And so contrary to the feeling that you shouldn't change the spring in a clock if you've got the old one, the original one, I changed it. And I changed it for one that looks like this. And that is now in this clock. And it works. And it doesn't jam. And I believe that this clock will now work con consistently without failing. Now, to recap on just the one or two points here, as I said, this wheel here, which has got the spiky bits on underneath, which is, I think, number three wheel, has a dimple in the top section the top of it and that dimple when lined up with this wheel here which it turns sorry when lined lined up with this um, this pinion here which may have a leaf the top of a leaf cut back which is, is uh, the proper indication, it should line exactly up with that. Or when this pin on this wheel here, which is the same wheel, is on the detent which, which is released when this uh, lever comes up on the half hour and the hour to give that impetus. And that means that that is being released when this wheel which lifts this hammer at the right time, i.e. when the hammer has just completed its drop, it should stop. That should be the end of it. It shouldn't continue anymore. If that dimple is not on the right place and this um, warning pin is not on this detent here, which has got to be released, then you won't get the sequence of the strike right. So. That is important. The other thing is that when you take the clock to pieces, the, um, the pallet here should be at 90 degrees so that it is ready to engage when, it in, when it's, it's, it's turning, it engage in the teeth and it'll lift up. If it's not in the right place, then it jams. So that and this pin are um, aligned. So if you take this pallet off, the rack pallet here, off the top, you've got to make sure that it's 90 degrees when this wheel has its warning pin on this section. In other words, when that's at 90, this is at, at looks like uh, 10 o'clock. And the other thing is that there's a also on this wheel here, which is adjacent to the fly, yep, there's a, a pin, which you can see, I hope, just down there, which must be somewhere between 10 past, and this actually, I think, is a little bit late. That's a quarter to, uh, so that it, it's free, has a free spin when this detent releases it. The final thing is that these wheels here, this one, 
the wheel below it and this one here all have pins on it, all have marks on it. And when you have taken this apart and you're putting it together again, try and get, well, not try, get, if there are marks, the three marks on this star wheel down here, which lifts these de detents here to make sure that um, it's either the half hour or the hour and that works on the sequence that that detent lifts this section here because there's a pin underneath it and the two de the two pins on that star wheel are slightly different. The one nearest the edge lifts this section higher which lifts this section clear of the, the, the wheel inside and gives this one the full spins for the hour and the other pin on the bottom of that wheel is a sh as is towards the center it's it's uh, nearer the arbor the the cannon wheel the cannon arbor and as a consequence it doesn't lift it so high so this detent here is not lifted clear of the the rack it just pops back and and it gives you the half hour to get those to work properly as i say if there's a pin mark on the bottom wheel, the star wheel, this wheel here, the, I think it's called the, the minute uh, pinion, and on this, the R wheel here, there should be a pin mark on that, get them all to line up so that they then will give you the right indication. This won't be at midnight, it'll be some time else, I'm not sure when, maybe six o'clock or when, as this thing falls down. If, however, there aren't those um, marks on the wheel, which and the one here is somewhere or another, but you can't see them, the things in the way. If they aren't there, then you want to line this up and make sure the hammer at midnight or midday at 12 o'clock, this rack tail here is about half a millimetre when it falls down at midnight, half a millimetre or a millimetre clear of the vertical edge of the snail. So that when it comes down, when it's lifted, it'll lift to about there. And then when the hand goes round, and you can see it, watch it now, when the hand goes round to hop past, that hasn't fallen. Watch it now. It hasn't fallen. It's coming round. This is getting ready to 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 uh, the flies getting ready to spin, and this is just being lifted now, just just clear, so that it'll drop down one. There. That's one, right? And that hammer hasn't yet got to the edge of the snail, but as it goes round again, you can see now that the hammer, this one, the rack tail, is now in line with the snail. And as it goes round, whoops, I'm snarling at that up. As it goes round, it now will fall there, and it's now engaged, right? So the, the system of this is such that if you've got a bum spring, in spite of it being original, your clock is going to stop from time to time. And to get it to work again, if you know what to do, you can turn it upside down so that this um, rack tail will fall clear of this face here and it just lifts up and drops clear and then it'll work. But you can't do that. So in spite of what some experts say, stuff it. Get the right spring. Make sure it's not overpowered. It shouldn't be too thick. The thickness of it is the cube of its power. It will be overpowered and on a clock like this it won't do it any good. You'll be putting too much power on the pivots, which in a French clock are very fine and very delicate. So I think I've covered 
th that aspect that I was concerned about. Um, and you've just got to make sure that there's a pin on the inside of this detent here. And that pin governs how far this detent will drop when it's lifted by the star on the centre wheel here. And if it doesn't lift high enough, it may need, and I don't recommend this, but it may need, a little tweak to give it half a millimetre or a millimetre drop in the vertical so that as this lifts, that is lifted just a little higher. And that happened on this particular clock. I tried to remedy it, but it, it, it just, you know, it, for one reason or another, and I don't know, this is, uh, it seems to be the original one that goes with it. It's a fantastic clock. Um, uh, but it, uh, it, 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 it didn't, it didn't lift high enough and it, it just wasn't working. So when you come to these clocks, you have got a problem. You've got to get everything in sync. You've got to make sure that the, the, the strike syncs are, are working. Try and understand that the, the relationship between the wheels and the pins in the warning pins because if they're out of sync and the hammer instead of dropping which I think this one has down there to the bottom doesn't drop all the way because the lever at the end of this detent here which rests on these pins here isn't in the right position and it's probably resting on one of the pins as opposed to being you know, just clear of it or in, so that it's it's on the it's finished its drop and if it's up here it won't work properly it's got to be finished the drop then it'll work and to do that you've got to make sure that this wheel with the detent uh, that's that's um, on it with the pin there is in sync with that wheel and that can, is done with a dot on the wheel that pin sh that uh, uh, warning pin should be on the detent here which cl is cleared and sometimes it, 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 it isn't as clear as that and there's a, a leaf which is cut um, short on the pinion here, down here so uh, I hope I've made it clear it's 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 a nightmare if you you can be working for at it for ages and if it stops at 20 past 11 20 past 12 it's because this rack tail is jammed on that not jammed but stuck it's just enough to stop the clock from working 20 past 20 or 25 past 12 bottom dollar that's what it is and frequently the cause of that is because the spring is too knackered. It just doesn't work. It hasn't got the, the continuous impulsion and you're stuffed. And the clock will keep stopping. And the only way you can do it without renewing the spring is by turning it upside down. And then that will fall out. Then you can turn it over and then it'll run again for another week or two weeks. Anyway, that's, in, that's that for the moment. I'll see if I can do anything later on. Is there anything more? Well, we've just about got there now. <clears throat> it's almost finished. But, uh, it's certainly much better than it was before. I had to make this one. As it was missing. Not really. 
you see in there. But, uh, the back is, <coughs> I didn't do very much about the back because I wanted to leave it as it was, more or less um, original with little stains on it. And if you recall, the stains were throughout the clock. It was all down here. Inside the uh, sections here, behind the kelp columns. Uh, um, this is cleaned up very well. So there we are.